This is going to be the second movie in our molar conversion series. So molar conversions again, or if I just substitute dozens for moles and 12 for 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, this will all seem easier. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. But what I really want to say is you've learned all the skills you already need to solve these problems. They're going to seem harder, but they're not. Chemistry units. Look, we can't work in dozens. We can't work in donuts when we're dealing with chemistry because donuts are billions of times larger than an atom. So dozens aren't going to work either. If I gave you a dozen atoms, you still couldn't see it. You couldn't even use a microscope to see it. So we're going to need to work in larger numbers. Dozens just won't work. Okay. Um, and we need to measure them with a scale. So you've seen the scales we use here in class. If I gave you a single atom and I dropped it on the scale, what would the scale read? Zero. So are grams a good way to measure single atoms? And the answer is no, not really. However, they are a great way to measure moles of atoms or groups of atoms that include billions and billions of atoms. So the first thing we need to do is to actually identify what is a mole. Well, um, Amadeo Avogadro actually came up with a number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, and he, we've since then called it the mole. And it's a group of atoms, just like a dozen is a group of donuts. But this group of atoms is really special. We're going to use it for the rest of the year. Okay. So does it matter what material is when you're saying, like, how many is in a mole? If I have a mole of donuts, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. If I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, I have a mole of atoms. It doesn't matter. If I have a dozen peanuts, I have 12 peanuts. If I have 12 uh, grandmothers, then I have a dozen grandmothers. It doesn't matter there. However, when I'm making a mole to mass conversion, the things are going to change because just in the same way that donuts were different than eggs, Iron is different than salt. So a mole of iron is going to weigh, have a mass of 55.85 grams. Now, where did I get that from? If you check out your periodic table, the, the molar mass of iron is 55.85. And you should ask yourself, well, wait a minute, isn't that the atomic mass? They are both the same. An atomic mass and a molar mass are the same. But when we studied the periodic table before, we said 55.85 was the atomic mass in atomic mass units. But now we're going to take it as 55.85 grams of a whole mole of iron. Okay. Likewise, sodium chloride has a molar mass of 58.45 grams. Now, how did I get that? Well, sodium has a mass of about 22.99, and chlorine, if you look it up on the table, is 35.5-ish. So you're looking, when you add the two together, 58.45 grams. Sample one-step problems. Just like in the donut video, there's going to be three ways to approach this. You can do it with ratios, you can do it by factor label, and we're going to bring back our uh, graphical interface and say, if you are a graphical person, if you, if you see images well, it's, if that's how you think, then we, I'll show you how to do that. So let's try the first one using ratios. If you have 2.3 moles of sucrose, how many molecules of sucrose do you have? So I would do it as 2.3 moles equals X molecules. And I'm just going to leave it as molecules. And I don't know what the answer to that is, but what I can do is say that I do know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Now we're going to solve this the same way. We've got a cross multiply, cross multiply, and we're going to get x equals 2.3 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. When I solve that, I'm going to get x equals 1.38, oops, my, my decimal points aren't coming out well today, times 10 to the 24th molecules. Okay. So we've got 1.38 times 10 to the 24th molecules. If you got the right answer with the wrong power of 10, I would encourage you to play around with your calculator more. 
I'm almost positive that you're entering your exponent, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, into your calculator incorrectly. So talk to some friends, talk to your teacher, figure out what's the best way to get that into your scientific notation into your calculator. Let's flip it around this time. We have a particle to mole conversion. So this time I'm going to use factor label. Um, we're going to start out with 1.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms but I don't want atoms. I want to get rid of atoms. So in order to get rid of things in factor label, you're going to multiply by a fraction, and I want atoms on the bottom. So atoms on the bottom, so they'll cancel out. And I really want moles. So I want moles on the top. Do I know a, a, a relationship between moles and atoms? Of course. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That looks like a 6.01. There we go. Times 10 to 23rd. So my atoms will cancel out and I'll be left with moles, which is what I want. So in effect, what I'm really getting is 1.5 times 10 to the 24th over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. My ones are just going to cancel out. And when I solve that thing, I'm going to get 2.5 moles. Be sure to write units after your numbers. In this um, set of problems, if you don't write a unit, you are automatically wrong. Okay, let's try some more. If you have 2.3 moles of iron atoms, how many grams of iron do you have? So let's do it again, start off with a ratio. 2.3 moles equals how many grams? And, oh, I don't know. But I do know that one mole of iron, if I go back to that first slide that I gave you, is 55.85 grams. Now, you might want to do yourself a favor at this point and say grams of Fe, because it's going to be different for every single material. So grams of Fe for iron. And we've got an X here, and how do we solve this? We're going to cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, I get X grams equals of 128, uh, but I can't really keep 128 because I only have 2.3 moles, which is two significant figures. So I'm going to keep 130 grams of iron as my answer. Let's try the second one now, and I'm going to erase this one. Um, we'll flip it around. Let's say we start with grams of time and we want to work back to moles and I'm going to use a factor label approach. So in factor label you always take your number that you were given, 175 grams of NACL, N-A-C-L, and put it over one and we have to get rid of that. So we got to get rid of grams of N-A-C-L. So we're going to stick it on the bottom of the fraction and I really want moles because the question's asking me for moles. So I'll put moles on the top. Um, do I know a relationship between moles and grams of NaCl? Yes, back on the first slide again, so our second slide, I told you that one mole was equal to 58.45 grams of NaCl. So when I multiply through, my grams of NaCl are gonna cancel out, and I'm gonna be left with 175 over 58.45, which is going to give me Two point nine nine, um, but I keep three significant figures, so I can actually say two point nine nine moles of NaCl. If I flipped these problems and I said that I had two point three three moles of NaCl, how many grams of NaCl would I have? Would I get the same answer? And the correct response is no. When you're doing mole to mass or mass to mole conversions, you have to look on the periodic table to get the molar masses. And the actual material that you have is going to influence your answer. You'll notice I didn't talk about that in our last set of problems because a dozen donuts is 12 and a dozen atoms is 12. Okay, when you're talking about that, the number of atoms is not influenced by what they are. Let's try one of these using our um, graphic. 
So we're going to put moles in the center here because moles are going to be solved for every single time, or you're going to be given moles, but it is the central concept of what we're going to do in this unit. So moles are in the center, particles are on one side, mass is on the other side. In order to get from moles to particles, we are going to need to multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So anytime you have moles, you will multiply by something. In this case, 6.02. If you want to go from moles to mass, if you have moles and you're had, heading to mass, you will multiply by the molar mass. Yeah, it's ridiculous, but it might help keep it in your head. When you're coming back, you're going to divide by the molar mass in order to get it, change the mass into uh, moles. Or if you have particles, you can divide by 6.02 times 7 to 23rd to get moles. So let's try this problem. We've got 15 grams of aluminum. So 15 grams of aluminum... Um, and so I'm going to be starting off here with mass, and I want to get to mole. So in order to get from mole, from a mass to moles, I'm going to need to take this pathway right there, and I'm going to need to divide by the molar mass. Um, and the molar mass of aluminum is 26.981 grams of aluminum is a whole mole. So if you solve this, 15 divided by 26.981 will give you 0 0.556 moles. Now can I keep all those figures? Nope. I was given 15 grams so I could keep two, gram, two significant figures of that. So I would round my answer to 0.56 moles of aluminum. So your average soda can actually contains a little over half a mole of aluminum. Now, if your can were made of something different, like let's say they made cans out of tin still, would 15 grams of tin be a little over a half a mole? No, because tin has a different molar mass than aluminum does. Remember, anytime mass is involved, you have to look up the molar mass and work specifically for that material. Two problems you should try on your own. You've got 407 grams of calcium chloride. How many moles of calcium chloride do you have? And then the second problem, if I gave you 1.5 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of helium, how many moles of helium would you have? Give them a shot, turn off the video, give yourself a chance to solve, and come back. Survey says, if you had 407 grams of calcium chloride, you had better calculate the molar mass first. So calcium chloride, the correct formula is CaCl2. Remember, Calcium takes a plus two charge and chlorine takes a minus one charge. So if you're having trouble writing the formulas, go back and learn how to write formulas. You will not be able to solve these problems unless you first figure out how to write the formulas. Calcium has a mass of about 40 and chlorine has a mass of about 35.5. So two chlorines, 35.5 times two is going to be about 71 and 71 plus 40 will give you about 111 and then you're going to say 407 divided by 111 gives me roughly 3.7 moles of calcium chloride the other one you have 1.5 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of helium well you're just going to divide that by 6.02 times 10 to the 22nd 23rd atoms sorry you have to divide by avogadro's number and you'll get about 0.025 moles of helium